very good evening sir uh, thanks for joining the call yeah hi with me uh, sir can you hear me sir yes thank you so much uh, with me in the call uh, our ceo uh, miss sandal tota also there sir she is isb alumni and she we founded in 2013 uh, black box so uh, i'm just handing over to her to just give a brief about you sir and we can start the session in 2 minutes okay good evening sir thank you so much for accepting to speak to the students um yeah. so blackbook is established in uh, 2013 sir and we are always into education and 2019 is an year where uh, the entire hi- higher education moved to online and started uh, accepting online as a medium of education and that's when we have uh, also become an edutech organization using uh, platform that we have made for students the quality education to be available to students across uh, tier 2 tier 3 cities and in rural areas also so that's about us sir um, uh, we are an organization with around 20 people and all, and uh, fo- focusing mostly on emerging tech and precisely uh, on um, data science machine learning and artificial intelligence and also about foundations of programming sir mostly on competitive programming and c and data structures which are really strong foundations that students need instead of just learning some programming languages they also have to learn these foundations is what we think these are our focus areas sir so i will uh, uh, the students are all listening from uh, youtube this is uh, a joint initiative along with ap uh, state skill development uh, ap ssdc it is called sir uh, with the joint initiative we are conducting a free program to first years to give a road map to the students uh, 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 for the next 3 years all the students who are listening to you are mostly first years and so with that background welcome uh, sir uh, please uh, speak to the students and dear students uh, please uh, join me in welcoming sir uh, gvv sharma sir who is uh, assistant professor from um, iit hyderabad and uh, he uh, teaches electrical engineering and artificial intelligence i found very little information about sir online but um, he has completed his phd from iit bombay and moreover what i understand from sir is that uh, he is very passionate about uh, improving and enabling uh, the knowledge of students uh, and he takes great initiatives and also great pain in traveling to different places and uh, teaching to the students that's what i understand uh, from the minimum i could gather from online so sir uh, any other information that you want to share about yourself please uh, share sir and uh, a lot of students will take inspiration from so you so just uh, one question to- is it possible for them to see uh, me i mean is it possible to see a video or is it just audio yes sir they will they will be seeing video sir okay and it will be nice to see you sir please uh, switch on your video yeah. i mean the background is not great but anyway i'll switch on my video Okay. okay, sir. All, all yeah. right, sir. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, good evening to all the students. <clears throat> uh, I hear that there are quite a few students who have joined this program. So it is good that you are uh, trying to learn uh, uh, this uh, C and data structures, basically programming. Okay. And uh, C is a good, uh, I mean, language to start with uh, because even though it is probably you now what. 1978 maybe 50 years old but still it is very much relevant uh, because all your hardware stuff is still done in c okay now i don't uh, know why that is the case but and that is how it is so anybody who wants to work in hardware you still have to work uh, in c and there are very many concepts uh, like uh, data structures etc which are uh, still very relevant okay so if you know how to program in c then you can program in any other language it doesn't take much time to adjust okay uh, one thing that all uh, like uh, the participants need to understand is that uh, by itself programming has no meaning okay uh, programming is just a means to solve a problem fine uh, the objective of programming is not to like learn syntax uh, int uh, main or uh, 
uh, int x, int y. Then the syntax is something which is secondary. It's not really that important. Right? Uh, what is important is that we should be able to solve problems uh, using C programming. Okay. So let me just uh, start with a simple C program. Okay. So we'll start the and that and I mean I cannot guarantee that my program will work, but let's try. Okay. So I'll just share my screen. And by the way, I didn't uh, prepare properly for like this. In fact, I never prepare for any of my sessions. Okay. So whatever you see is whatever I typically do in class also. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen. So do this. Yeah. So uh, Anuradha, can you see my screen? Or uh, anybody? Not yet, sir. Okay. Can I ask you? Not yet. Sir is trying to reshare. Can you reshare, sir? Uh, one minute. Yeah. Yes, sir. We are able to see. We are able to see. Great. Yes, sir. Fine. So let me start by writing a simple C program. And uh, what is it I'm going to write the program for? Uh, let me see that also. I just opened one file. Yeah, so this is uh, from your NCRT, not NCRT, CBSC, class 10 paper from the year 2020. It's not mentioned here, but this is uh, the year 2020 paper. That's last year. Let's look at the first question. Uh, the first question is that uh, to find uh, the values of k for which the quadratic equation uh, 2x square plus kx plus 2 equal to 0 has equal roots. Okay, So this is the problem. And by hand, uh, you can probably solve it by finding the condition for the discriminant to be equal to 0. Right? So let's try it using a computer program. Okay. So in general, a quadratic equation would have the form ax square plus bx plus c equal to zero, right? And uh, you need to find the discriminant and then you need to find out for what value it is equal to zero, okay? That's how it works, fine. So let's do that. So if you look at the C program, this is what this looks like. And the first thing that we do is uh, we'll write the coefficients of the quadratic equation. Okay, so I'm using something called float. What float means is that the coefficients can be decimal numbers. Okay, that's what this float means. So first you have to tell the program that uh, what kind of variables you are using. Okay, so A, B, and C we are using, and uh, A, B, C are nothing but decimal numbers. That's what this float means. Okay. Main is just uh, one like uh, place where you actually start writing uh, your code. Okay, think of it that way. There are a lot of details that you will probably learn as part of this course for the next whatever uh, few days. Fine. So don't worry if you don't understand anything. The idea is uh, to just walk you through the process of writing a C program. Okay. And whenever you write a program, you have to make sure that you should write comments. Okay. So first thing is, what exactly is this program about? Okay, this program is to find the condition that a quadratic equation has equal to. 
okay so when i do this double slash this means that this is a comment so the program will ignore this line okay it will not execute this line this is only for your uh, reference okay and because i have written this code i'll write this code by okay what date today is 24 jan right so this is how we are going to start writing the code okay so i have written this so again we should always write comments either on top or on the side okay fine so these are the coefficient of the quadratic equation okay and now next let's write something called d and what is d d is a discriminant Okay. As you can see, I have put a semicolon here. The semicolon means that the program, I mean, this line is ending here. Okay. So these are what are known as uh, syntax rules. Fine. So it's just like uh, when you write English, you put a full stop or something, right? Similarly, in a program, when you are ending a line, then you have to put a semicolon. Okay. So these are uh, rules that you have to follow when writing any program. Okay. and uh, as you all know from high school d is what d is square root right b square okay so i'll just write b into b minus 4 into a into c so this is a discriminant right now the square root is a function which is not i mean uh, which is for which you need to write something okay Like this stdio dot h, which I have written here, it is one file which is lying somewhere in your computer, okay, uh, which is part of your whatever uh, C system, and uh, this has a lot of built-in functions, okay, and those are the functions that you will be calling. So similar to stdio dot h, you have. Sir, is it possible to zoom, sir? Zoom, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, One minute. How do we zoom this? Yeah, is it okay? Uh, yes, sir. Better. Yes. Okay. Fine. Yeah. So sorry about that. Yeah, so I'm writing this mat dot h, and d is given by this. Okay, let's now we need to just print this d and c the value. Okay, so this is the program that we have written, and uh, what are a, b, and c? Let's see that. So a is two. So I'll write a equal to two point zero. Okay. Next, uh, b is basically k, and we don't know the value for k. So let's take uh, b to be four first. So I'm taking one of these options. So I'm starting with this option, and then c is equal to two. Okay, so I have got b is uh, it is point zero point zero. Okay, yeah. So this is basically the program, and what we are doing here is uh, we are just printing the value of t. Okay, so just to complete the comments, then we will write something called return zero. Don't worry about what it is. I'm just writing it. Okay, you learn all these things in future. Okay. Yeah. So now let me try to execute this program. Okay.
Yeah, so I have this here. Okay, so as you can see, here it is giving some error. That is a semicolon is expected before return. Okay. So that means we missed the rules here because of when we end the line, we should write a semicolon. Okay. These kind of errors are known as syntax errors. Okay. It says undefined uh, reference to SQRT. Okay. And that happened probably this because this mat.h is something which needs to be called. So you need to do something more. So write something called minus eleven. Now it works. So the value is zero. Okay. So which means the discriminant is zero for k equal to four. Okay. So which means that uh, the value four for the value four, this equation has equal rules. Now option B is plus minus four. So let's check for minus four also. For minus four also it is equal to zero, which means both plus and minus four are possible solutions of this. So, but as if you see the answers which are given here, one is four, one is minus four, one is plus minus four. So four is correct, but it's not the complete answer. Minus four is also correct, but it's not the complete answer. So you have both four and minus four as the answer for this, okay? So note that I have not really tried to solve it by hand. I have just used a computer and I'm just verifying the values here, which are given, okay? This is not the best way to solve any problem when you actually give an exam, but uh, when you want to explain or you know, when you want to use a computer program, then I think this uh, kind of technique is completely justifiable. Okay. Now let's look at option D. We have to eliminate this. So let's see what is the value when k equal to zero. So which means this is equal to zero. It says not a number, okay? Nan here, which you see, which means means that it is not a number. So most likely what is happening is the discriminant is negative in this case, when you put uh, k equal to zero, okay? So the correct answer is either plus four or minus four, right? So this is a simple demonstration of uh, how your uh, C program, okay, can uh, help you solve a problem or in better words, verify a problem, okay? And the problem was taken from your class 10th uh, board exam paper, from the CBSC, whatever, class 10th, okay? I don't know, you're all from uh, AP. If you are from AP, then probably it is from your, uh, this is similar to what you must have done in your class 10th uh, AP state board examination, okay? But when I studied, I mean, I studied in central board. So <laughs> I took questions from there, fine. Yeah, so now I think I'll stop sharing my screen and uh, we'll talk about uh, the sense of this, okay? Yeah, so I think in the, now you can see me again, okay? So what we have done the past, say around uh, 10, 15 minutes was actually writing a program. And uh, what I wanted to show was that we wrote some things, but the main goal is not to just write those things. The main goal was to solve a problem, okay? That is what programming is required for, okay? And that's how, that's how you should think of programming. A lot of things that we do in engineering are basically solving problems. Whether we write uh, math equations, whether we use AI or whatever, uh, the objective is not to learn the subject just for learning the subject or mugging up or writing an exam just because some company uh, wants to kind of give you a job. That is not the objective of learning programming, okay? The objective of programming is to solve problems around you, okay? The objective of say artificial intelligence or any form of engineering, mechanical engineering or civil engineering, 
whatever engineering streams you are from okay the objective is to solve problems which you see in your like day to day life okay and uh, it so happens in these days with so much advance in technology everything can be done through programming almost everything okay so whether you are a mechanical engineer or a chemical engineer ultimately a lot of automation is involved and uh, all this automation happens through computers and uh, when i am talking about computers that means all this happens through programming okay so if you want to probably implement a control system you may have a big machine right which does a lot of things but controlling that machine happens through a computer okay everywhere in all industry computers are the ones which are doing it it may not be a big computer like uh, your laptop or something but maybe a small micro controller that's also a computer and when you program that micro controller that again happens in c okay all sorts of programming especially hardware programming happens in c okay even in software if you want to do something really fast you write it in c only okay java python etc are high level languages they have their own users but ultimately lot of underlying stuff happens in c okay so let me see how much time we have yeah we probably have a few more minutes so uh, is there any way in which uh, we can get some feedback from the students any questions etc that they may have i know i probably should have uh, talked about this earlier but can they type any questions or comments in the chat window uh so i'm just checking youtube they're all watching on the youtube sir yeah uh somebody is giving you a suggestion you can yeah. use line gdb it's very flexible compiler uh, use what uh probably it's a new compiler sir they are saying online gdb, GDB. it's a GDB. very flexible compiler yeah gdb is a debugger that's what i okay. know about gdb <laughs> okay. okay and online is something i mean it is good i mean though i'm giving this what our talk online your course is going to be online but let me clarify that i am not a big fan of online stuff okay online is definitely good for many things okay uh, but it's uh, it should be a part of the system ultimately you learn a lot online through videos okay and through like uh, a lot of stuff which is available in websites etc so there's a lot of knowledge online but ultimately you have to do things offline okay Uh, nowadays uh, people are trying to do a lot of uh, use lot of online tools for many things so they are okay to a certain level but after that you should go back to offline the entire world is offline okay so that is again something that <laughs> uh, i mean the students need to be aware of so your colleges uh, i mean no online training program should be like replacing your colleges okay that is something which uh, uh, that's not healthy if something like that happens on a big scale uh, i would say that's not uh, very healthy so these programs are definitely useful but uh, that should not be they should not be a replacement for your regular college education okay so always keep that in mind your teachers in your uh, institutions where are you are studying uh, they are also very very important and all these things are just additional tools which will help you get better okay so any other comments from the students sir, another question is uh, sir is there any difference in teaching in iit and other colleges yes there is a lot of difference in teaching uh, let me tell you one thing but the students i don't see too much of a difference of course the students who enter iit they have written exams and all so definitely we have a good bunch of students at iits but that doesn't mean the students at other institutes are like uh, not as good i have seen equally good students outside iits okay and uh, the problem that happens in uh, the uh, colleges is that they don't have enough uh, autonomy in various things and that affects okay for various reasons uh, and I, if i keep talking about it it will take me probably hours <laughs> to tell you about the problems with the regular college education system so fortunately at iit we have a lot of freedom okay to design courses to teach courses to learn from students so all these opportunities unfortunately are not available to teachers in other institutions okay very few institutions in india have autonomy at the faculty level and even there where they have autonomy they don't use it so that actually creates a lot of problems uh, when it comes to uh, college education okay so that is the only so difference i would say yeah 
so next question is can you tell us about artificial intelligence okay so uh, see this artificial intelligence is all uh, a new fad which has come uh, all this was happening long back by the way in fact we use a lot of artificial intelligence concepts in uh, communication like uh, when we actually implement algorithms and certain communication algorithms etc a lot of those things are actually based on uh, artificial intelligence and ai is nothing but optimization and uh, a decent algorithm typically that's what it is okay in the process you have a lot of say uh, methods which have evolved over the past say 40 or 50 years i would say okay and those methods have now been put together and uh, they are now being called ai it's nothing new it's have it has all been there only thing that has happened is many of the algorithms are now like uh, useful uh, because of better computational capability okay one new thing that has come is deep learning in this artificial intelligence uh, but this deep learning is also like very if you right now people don't understand much it works that's all that uh, happens and because it works people are using it so if you are using something in python like some uh, neural networks etc that's basically what you call deep learning and uh, nobody understands how they work okay or, or very few people actually understand a little bit of how they work but not enough but because they work so people are using it fine so that's basically artificial intelligence it has been there for a long sir, time the process is just automation nothing else yes sir uh, uh, do these new emerging or already existing technologies as you said ai ml and data science and related yeah. technologies yes. um how do they prepare for the future sir uh, see it has been happening it's not that it was not there it was going on we were all doing it in all engineering only the cs guys i think discovered it recently and they feel like <laughs> as if it is something great <laughs> but it has been there i mean electric engineers you ask them uh, all the ai stuff that you see actually most of it came from electrical mechanical and chemical engineering okay uh, cs guys discovered it uh, mostly for uh, search and that kind of stuff in all these uh, e commerce applications mostly okay so companies like google and amazon etc when they found that these algorithms are useful for searching and getting stuff right from their databases then it became like very popular but otherwise these have been there for a long time many of these techniques we have been using it for a long time so one last question sir yeah so they are asking how can electrical engineers get a hold of software programming thank you <laughs> see if you are actually doing anything practical then you have to do a lot of cs Uh, for example those who are using arduino so arduino at the basic level works on assembly okay and if you look at the avr uh, say tool chain the ide that you see is actually something that uh, is built on top uh, below that you have c level and below that you have an assembly level so all this is basically compilers okay so if you want to like uh, maybe build something like arduino yourself any electrical engineer you can do it without actually doing the entire software part. if you want to i mean like a product out of it okay so that is why it's built into it cs is like just one application i would say of uh, uh, this there are only some two or three core cs uh, areas i would say maybe databases that is probably core cs right which uh, is not directly linked to electrical etc and maybe one or two other areas otherwise most of the cs that at least i have seen there is a touch of electrical engineering there it's only that uh, Uh, last whatever i would say one or two decades lot of divergence has happened in fact in the earlier days most of the cs guys came from electrical engineering only okay in the 80s etc in fact iit bombay i think when they started the cs department many of the guys actually moved from the e department to the cs department which was created okay that's how it happened yeah thank you so much sir uh, great session and you know how you have uh, just picked up a picked up a problem for 10th class question you know that itself is a foundation for them to try so many other examples so thank you so much uh, looking forward for more sessions from you sir yeah okay nice thank to be you. here thanks yeah thanks bye See you. bye uh, so thanks students and uh, thanks for the good questions Uh, so today you will be having a recap from Swaroop sir. But before that, would like to tell you that uh, 
all the questions related to arrays have been provided with test cases so you can start working and there will be an aptitude test this week so just brush up your concepts because what i've seen is it's really poor the the uh, results from this first year students is really poor you are more close to your aptitude your 10th class aptitude but i'm not sure why you you didn't perform very well in your aptitude test i'll be looking forward for better results and this is the basis very fundamental foundation for you for any job so just brush your concepts related to your aptitude will be giving an easier test this time this saturday attempt that but definitely attempt the quantitative aptitude test and a c test okay all right i'll hand it over to swarup sir and i'm signing off for today because i'm traveling um uh, hi is uh, swarup garu uh, uh, welcome once again and uh, over to you thank you andy thank you hi students hope everyone is doing good sorry i have a problem with the cam so i will be uh, only available with the audio as of today so i will be sharing the screen so today uh, we are going to do some recap of what uh, we have started what is c programming and basic steps of c programming okay so let's start so you know how we have started this uh, okay uh, can any can give me the feedback katyani uh, or someone whether my voice is audible or not any one from, uh, from the black box is my voice is audible give me a minute Uh, is my voice is audible? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's clear. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. So let's start. So everyone know. So what is hello world? Now you people might have understood what exactly the hello world work. So what is comment? Comment statement. How exactly it work? What is preprocessor directive? What is main? what is the main function basically and what is this flower backers the program syntax and everything right so so basically this is hash include with the p directive which is having a header files of printf and everything all your predefined functions are there with std.h and you have a main function which is a heart of a program of c programming and uh, you are right you are still uh, here you are writing it Uh, print hello world. Okay. So as I said uh, in my previous classes and everything, so C program is totally of this slide, this uh, this slide itself. See, so you might have seen all these programs, all these keywords in your C programming from past so many days. We have so from past for two weeks you have been using your writing C code, write everything right. So all these things you might have. 
heard about, right? You have used it or you're learning it right now or whatever it may be. See, so you have character. So you have, when you're writing an array, you are using character. And when you're writing a string, you are using a character, constant, continue, default, for loop, for go to, if, int, double, long, short, signed, unsigned, void, all these switches, structure, structure, you have been using stuck, switch, register, return, union, extern, enum, else, all these are all a default do. So you have been using all these things from past two weeks, right? So C program is totally the all is everything in this single slide. If you know how exactly to use these keywords perfectly, uh, if you know how to use these keywords, what exactly they mean, how to write the syntax for that thing, then you know C programming for how to use for the logic is what is more important. So if you know syntaxes of these keywords, that is more than enough. Okay. So let's go with very fundamental data types, right? So data types, as I said previously, data types are nothing but defining. So you have a data. So you have to categorize those data in different, uh, different. You, you categorize those things, right? Like uh, for example, you have a, uh, you have, uh, uh, you have. Uh, so what is it? Groceries of your home, right? So one is for the cooking, one is for the washroom, and one is for the uh, uh, other things, uh, cooking, and for the other thing is for puja or whatever this is. You categorize the items, right? Similarly, this categorization in C program is of mainly of four types, right? So one is care. So this is keyword care. So it it represent it is representing basically a character or string. Okay, and you have integer. We, when we use integer, we use keyword int. And when we are using floating, like decimal numbers, we are we using float type of keyword. And double is double precision floating point of thing. Okay, so what exactly it is doing? The data type is nothing but it is telling to a, a compiler to give us a give a space for the data which is there of which is of the character which is of this type character type so when you have character type it will have certain amount of memory so that we're going to see in the coming slide we already seen that thing int have four int have, character has one float have four bytes of data so that amount of data will be stored that amount of data will be allocated for that particular variable, okay? So these are different types of data types we have in C programming, okay? So we have void data types, void data type, which is, uh, which is taking only, uh, which is empty. Basically, it is a cushion type of thing for uh, cushioning where you take all, uh, uh, you have, it is a null, it is a basically absent, there, there is no value for this type of data. So all these things, return type, all these things. So many, so many people have asked in the program, in the comment section, what is a return? Why, why you return zero? So return zero means you are giving a certain type of value to the function. So when we talk about function and when we, uh, when, uh, when we know, when you know about the function, how would the return type is all about? So at return type, you will providing void. So it is mean it can capture any kind of data. It may be a, a, a zero, it can be a character, it can be any kind of thing. So when, we, when you're not sure which type of data you are going to get, then you put a void type of data, okay? As you know, you have a, a void, uh, we have integer type of data, right? So integer type of data is nothing but the all natural numbers which are available. And along with that one, you have a floating type of number. Okay, all these data types have again have some modifiers. So these modifiers are nothing but prefixes, means it is precisely saying which type of integer we have so many integers, right? So which type of integer it should have. So, uh, so that is called modif that uh, that terms for the diff uh, you are specifying which type of uh, integer or float you are going to use. So that will is that will going to be done by using 
uh, these modifiers like short, long, signed, and unsigned. So when we say short, it is also, these are all keywords. See, short is also one keyword, long is also one keyword, signed and unsigned is also one keyword. Let's show them. See, you have all these keywords, right? Signed, unsigned, long. These are the double, all these things are keywords, right? So these keywords are, uh, these keywords, these things are modifiers. So how do you, so this will say specific how much amount of data is exactly needed. When you say integer, it is storing four only. When we say short int, it will, it will allocate only two bytes of data. When we say long, it will hold eight bytes of data. When we say signed value, which type, whether it is a signed integer, unsigned integer, you have positive, uh, positive number and negative number. How are you going to tell to the computer by, uh, if you say signed, it is, it is mentioning that by default, the, uh, the C program, when you say integer, it definitely, it use only unsigned data type of character. When you specify about signed one, it is telling to the compiler that the data, the, the data type is integer with a sign in that one. That is whether it has a negative or positive in that one. So we, that will be, that will be told by modifier. So this is signed mod, signed one will be modifier for that. Okay. Then we have something called variable and constant. So variables are the things on which you do computation, on your uh, computation. What type of computation you're going to do? All these things are done in variables. So variables are very important parameter in C program or any language. So everything is done in uh, done on variables. Okay. So these variables are main to the C programming. So these are things as the name says itself a bit, it vary according to time. So, so what exactly literally it means, it is referring to a section of memory box to which data can be stored. Okay, it is select, when we say when, uh, in a member in a C programming point of view, when we say when we say a variable, it means we are allocating a memory, memory box, okay. In this memory, which type of data, this variable is, we're going to say by data type. And in that one, which, what exactly the specifier, should, what is the modifier for that and whether it is short or long is declared by modifier. So how the format will be? The format of declaring a, data, a variable, it will be short, short, I will give you an example. We give an example, let's see. Okay, we, we give an example like, short is a modifier. Then we say, which type of data? It is a integer type of data. Okay, we say X is a, small x is a variable. So this is variable name. This is a type of data, but is it integer? Or with this is modifier. So these are modifier, these are type of data, and this is the variable. So when we're declaring a variable, V means when we're declaring a variable, we we are saying that to the uh, to the memory section that a memory block of integer data type should be allocated. With, with the name, with what are the variable name you're going to give that thing, okay? So how to declare it? So we have, how to initialize the variables? So it is very important that you give a memory, you're, when you're saying you're declaring a variable, so it is a memory block. So previously something, some random data will be already there, right? So what you have to do is we have to initialize the variable. If you don't initialize the variable, then the garbage value or junk value will be coming to picture, okay? So we have some naming convention for the variable. So usually the name should be start with letter and underscore, and it should be lowercase should be there, okay? And 
Do, please remember, we should not use re C reserved keywords like int all these things should not be there in a variable. Example, student name and everything, we already discussed about that thing, okay? So what is a constant? So constant is nothing but a variable which is constant throughout the program, okay? So that is a, so, so when we say uh, it uh, a constant, it means it is constant throughout the program and it has a fixed value throughout the program, okay? Like pi, okay? So how you define a data? So you have modifier, you have data type, then a variable. So we have here data type called cat and a variable name var, as I already told in the prefix example. Okay. So how to define a character data type? A character data type can be defined like this. Okay. So it is a variable with character type of data. And this variable will be given with a semicolon x. So in x, in letter, you're going to store, letter is the memory block. So there will be a memory block. In the, there will be a memory block. In a memory of four bytes. With the variable with the name letter of data type char. So this is the name of this memory block having a uh, as a data type as character. And in that one, you are storing x. You are storing x. Okay, in this memory, the, uh, the data is stored as x. Okay, so when we're saying integer data type, when you're saying integer data type, so here, instead of this much memory block, it has having only one data. It will be having only one byte of data because it's character type. When we have an integer data type, so it will be having four bytes of data. So the five will be represented in a Four. So count is the name of the data type, uh, name of the variable, and int is the type of the data, and phi is a value which you're going to put in the count variable. Okay. And similarly, you have a float where you're going to use decimal number with a name my. You're going to store decimal value into that one. Okay, you have a double which give more number of so larger the twice the storage of the memory. So it will give more number of values you can store there. So this is the range we have already seen. Short int will be having two bytes. The unsigned int will be having in short it will be having two bytes of data. Unsigned int will be having four. Int will be having four. Long int will be having four bytes of data. Signed character have one byte, unsigned have one byte, float have four bytes of data, and double having eight bytes of data stored is allocated, and long double will be having a 12 byte of data. Uh, data memory, bytes of data blocked for that. So when you say you're using in short int variable uh, where, that means a where type of data where named memory block has been reserved, which has a characteristic of integer. So how much memory block it will going to have? It will having a two bytes of memory block will be reserved for that one. Okay, then you have operators. So these op what are operators? So operators are nothing but a C functions, which are used built-in functions, which are used or signed, which are used to work on a variables. So operator, what I, so operator, what is going to do it? It is going to do operation on a variable. Okay. So these are inbuilt functions. So these operators are inbuilt functions which are going to work on variables. Okay. So we have broadly specified the C operators as automatic operator, assignment operator, logical and relation operators, and bitwise operators. 
operators, bitwise operators. Okay, arithmetic operators. You know what is arithmetic operators, right? Plus, minus, all these things. So we're going to see just brushing. So we are just brushing. So I will be covering the total topic we have covered till now and uh, see how exactly. So what is arithmetic operators? So arithmetic operators we have plus, minus, multiply, which is star. These are all characters. See, these are all our characters, but these characters have been defined certain roles in C program, studio.h. So when you say plus, you're giving a, uh, in the, what you say, a character. So this has a certain function, which is already given to that one. So it is add. So it is adding two variable. Then you have minus, then you have pol, then you have star, then you have divide operator, mod, modular, then you have post increment and pre increment. We have discussed a lot about these things in our previous classes. So we have post increment, increment, which is incrementing plus one and decrementing minus minus. Still so many people, some people have problem with the post increment, D, pre increment, they're going to check what exactly it is. So what is pre increment and post increment? So basically it is nothing but you're adding, when you say plus plus, you're adding one value to the to the variable. For example, if I say, if I say, int, So when I say int count is equal to zero, okay? So it is an integer data type having a name count and we are initializing it with the zero, okay? So what exactly count, count plus, plus plus means Remember, C is a, a case sensitive language. So you have to be very careful when you're giving uh, capital C and small k when you're defining it. So when we say count plus plus, it, it really means that it means count is equal to count plus one. So what exactly it means? Count is equal to so what is the value initial value you put zero plus one so now what will be the value of the count count value will be one okay so what that exactly it is so if you if you place if you replace the count value with five now what will be the value When you say count. now I am defining count with five. So when I say count plus plus, so what exactly it means? Now the the meaning of that thing is nothing but you're saying count is equal to count plus one means count count is equal to because what is the value we stored in the count is five. So five, five plus one. So value of count will be now six. When this operation will take place, this operation will take place depend upon whether which type of data, which type of increment you're doing, whether you're doing post increment, whether you're doing pre increment. Okay. Post increment means 
cost increment means the operation the the adding of one will take place after that line is executed after this line is executed so at this point of time it is plus plus so it is post increment means at this time the value of 5 what is the value we have given count is equal to 5 so at of before this thing the uh, uh, so before this thing the value of count will be 5 only but after this line after this uh, this line is executed then only one is added so it is the, this the increment of one will be done only after this this code is this line is completed after this line is completed so that is post increment please remember it is very important i told many times and we have done some examples also it is done after this line okay so when we say plus plus count it is pre incremented it means the addition of one is going to happen before the completion of this line before the completion of this line okay means now the value of count is 6 because it is pre increment it is pre increment so count here is 5 but here it will be 6 because it is pre increment it is going to use before the execution before the completion of that line itself similarly minus it is going to decrement with minus value minus 1 so it is post decrement so after this line is executed then only the value will be decreased to minus 1 otherwise it will be uh, it is a pre decrement it is first decremented then the execution of this code this line will be happening so this is very important with respect to so now similarly we have assignment operators so we these operators are basically so till now we have seen arithmetic operators like this thing now we have assignment operators so assignment operators are nothing but which are assigning certain value of value values values to the variable like previously when we say in the example we said count is equal to 0 so is equal to is a assigning operator it is a operator which is working on a variable when we say this type plus plus symbol and equal to it means very much similar to you are adding x plus 5 value to it one minus means minus value to it. divide means multiplication is like this so this is very important please note down all these things are very important so these are the different types of assignment operators okay then we have logical operators or relational operator operators we have less than or greater than so these are all the operators with c support less than greater than equal to greater than equal to smaller than equal to exactly equal to not equal to and operator and or operators okay so we have done some programs regarding this thing so i am just brushing up all this thing so and operators means before this condition after this condition then if both are true then only the other thing will be executed if i or means either one is true then the operation will be completed okay you know you previously you exactly know that double equality is not same as equal to because this equal to is assigning operator this is as uh, this is relational operator okay so logical operators not equal to a is not equal to b so this is a symbol for not it means if it is true then do the action and operators means if it is true this both the statements are true then only the next statement will be executed if both if any one of them is strong that is it is going to be false okay similarly or operators or operators either one is true it will be true so this is how the example of logical operators then we have bitwise operators so the bitwise operators work so what are the operations which we have seen whether it is assignment or uh a uh, arithmetic operator assignment operators whatever the operators here those are the operators which are done on a byte level so these operators are basically of operations on bit so bit uh, so you know everyone know that bit is nothing but a single memory block 
where it will be having zeros and one. So when we use these operators like single and, single or not, one's complement, two's complement, all these things, right shift and left shift, all these operators are basically working on a byte to byte level, bit, uh, bit by bit level. So, okay. So when you're defining a data types, so when you want to scan them, when you want to put them in the memory block, you are taking input from the keyboard or any kind of stuff, right? So you have to specify to the computer that whatever the data which is going to come is here of this format. You every can't every time you can't put that it integer uh, data type is coming please store. So we are already specifying that with the data is integer or character kind of stuff. But if you want to take the data which is going to come. So you have to do, you have to specify that format, which type of format it is, whether it is a character, whether it is a double, uh, it is an integer, double float, unsigned integer, character, or all these things will be, you have to specify thing. When this is going to use, this is called percentile C, means when you scan, you're using a function scan up, right? So when you say percentile C, you are saying to the computer, the input which I'm going to give you is a character type of data and you're assigning that value to the given value. You give an address to that. Okay. So percentile C is character, single character, percentile D or percentile I is a signed integer, is a signed integer. Remember this thing. And when we say E or capital E, we say float or double. Okay. Exponential float, basically it is. These are exponentially float. When we say F, it is a float, signed decimal, decimal number, signed decimal number. So E is exponential float number. O is octa, octal number, 16, 16 digit formation. Then you have S, S is nothing but string. Uh, it is a string data type, sequence of characters, okay? When you say U, it is unsigned, decimal number, unsigned decimal number, okay? X is nothing but hexa value number, okay? So it's a simple example, how exactly we can write? We say hash include studio.h main int, we are saying we have a variables called A, B, C. So these are the names of the variables. So we are allocating a memory block for a variable, memory block for B variable, and memory block for C variable, okay? And this memory block is which type? It is a integer type of data. It is a integer type. So all these three variables are of integer type of data. So we are saying, we are giving a function which is defined in the studio.header file printer. We are printing the value and we are saying, when we, this means, the scanner function means so printf is nothing but an output function. Scanf is nothing but an input function. So we are giving any input from the keyboard and all these things will be scanned. This function will going to scan that data. So which type of data you're going to get it, you're going to give, will be defined by this format. Which for which type of data? We are defined integer type of data, right? So integer type of data. So what is the uh, uh, what is the format which we have to specify? We have to use we have to use percentile D. So that's the reason we are using percentile D here. So we have so many percentile D. A is also percentile D. Uh, A is also integer. B is also integer. C is also integer. So what are the value which you are going to type first time? Where it is going to get stored? How you going to define that place? So all these have a memory location, A, B, and C memory location. This is also integer type. So this is also all our integer type data types only. All A, B, C are list. Now, you are saying here, that is an integer, the, whatever the, the value which you're going to give from the, from the keyboard is an integer type of data. And please put that thing in the address of A. So it is specifying the location where you're going to store that data. So this is location and this is the format. So scanner, this is the so this is the format and this is the address of where you want to put the input also. So similarly, scanner number two. 
See here also it is percentile D, it is also integer type, but the location is different. So it is storing in B. And this is A. And you are going doing a computation. You are doing a com uh, computation on variables. So what are the variables you have? So you are saying that. So you have defined what is A where you you are getting a data. From you're getting a data for A, you're getting data for B. So what is C? So here we have we have an expression where we're saying that C is nothing but is equal to, which is assigning. So we are assigning C value with what the value of A plus A. This is arithmetic operator with B. So A plus B. So what is the resultant will be that will be stored in C that will be assigned to C. That will be assigned to C variable. So that is the value of C. Now print of what exactly we are saying. So in printer we are saying. See here, sir, you said only for the uh, specifiers only scanner we are going to use. No, I not said it is a specifier of the data type. It is a printer percentile D. It is also specifying. It is also specifying the percentile D. And here also it is specifying the percentile D. So which which value uh, which we have three integer values so we are saying three integer values has to be stored for this one so for this format the first one after semicolon so data which is stored in a will be appearing here and this for this one you are giving another so it will be b value will be shown here and when we are saying first find c you are getting data from c okay so why we are not specifying address here? We are not specifying address here because the we already assign the data. So computer only already know that we these values are already stored in the memory. So we are going to put all this value in the value uh, in the that specifiers only. So that is why we are not putting any address symbol to it. We are taking direct value from the store itself in the memory block itself. Hope you understand the meaning of those things, right? Now, there should be a so type cache, which is LHS should be equal to RHS, right? So this is what we already done. So we, we, want, we have done all these problems, right? So I just want, please do this problem and please tell, we have already done this thing. I want you people, because I have explained again now, please tell me the answers of this thing. I will give one minute of time. Please type the, uh, the value of A, value of B, value of C. Hope you got the answer. So what will be the value of D? See, it is pre-incrementing. So it is saying pre-increment A, pre-increment A, increment A. So it is pre-incrementing three times. So value of A will be three plus one, that will be uh, two plus one, that will be three, three plus one, that will be four, four plus one, that will be five. So five into five will be 25. It is a post increment. So the value of A will be 5, 5, 5. But after this execution, the assignment is completed, the value of A will be incremented three times because it is three times post increment. So it will be 5 plus 1, that will be 6, 6 plus 1, that will be 7, 7 plus 1, it will be 8. So that will be the, so output will be, so B value will be 25, C value will be 8, A value a value will be 8, B value will be 25, and C value will be 25, uh, 125. 5 into 5 into 5, that is 25 into 5, that is 125. Right? Okay. So, what is the rule in C programming for executing a program? So, so execution of the program has to be like this. So, how exactly the compiler compiles the thing? 
So first it will pay increment and pre-increment, pre-decrement. So it will do, if in a statement, you have a pre-increment or pre-decrement, first it will do pre-increment and pre-decrement. After that, it will do mod, then it will do divide function, uh, divide functionality, then it will do mul, that is a multiplication, then it will do add, then it will do sub, sub, subtract, then it will assign, then post increment and post decrement. Please remember, it is very important. Pre-increment will take pair first and post increment will take pair after the execution of the code. Okay. And we have another thing. It is going to take from right to left to right. The execution will happen from left to right. So here, so first B is 12. So it is left to right. So B divided by two, it uh, divided by A, it is six. So 12 divided by six, it will be two and two divided by C value is two. So two divided by two will be one. So value of B will be one. Value. Okay. Similarly, now bracket hold. Another example is that bracket holds the preceding first in the arithmetic operation. In the arithmetic operation, bracket will be holding the pre most important thing. Okay. Please solve this problem. We already done it. So it's, it take care of all your proceedings, arithmetic operation and bracket rule and your left to right operations. Please type the answers of answer of B and A. Hope you people have done. So what is the value of B? So B value, let's see. What is the value of A? A is three. So how many pre-increment we have? Only one pre-increment. So value of A will be pre-incremented only once. That will be the value of A is four. And we have any other pre-increment? Yes, we have another pre-increment, which is C. So if C having a pre-increment. So as a rule, we have to do first pre-increment. So what are the values which are having a pre-increment? Our A is pre-incremented and C is also having a pre-increment. So A value will, will be changed to 4 and C value will be converted to 3. Okay. Now we have bracket rule. So we have to do from left to right. But in that one, we have something very specified that in arithmetic operations, we have to do bracket. So smallest bracket, which is there, which has to be executed first. So smallest bracket is this one. So value of A is 4. C value is converted to now 3. So 4 into 3. So it will be 12. 12 into 3, 36. This will be executed. Now it is 4 into 3. That is 12. 12 plus 36. So value will be 48. So B value will be 48. A value will be, it is post, A value is post increment. Post increment is also there. So A value will be 4 plus 1 after this execution, after B is assigned, though value of A will be five. Let's check whether we have, so this is the answer. Okay, so we have structures, selection structures. So selection structures are nothing but, which give logical, which use logical, uh, logical expressions like, and operators or operators are greater than or equal to all these expressions are there. If it is, so we are using a structure, sexual selection, uh, selection structure, we select which type have to do, when to do what. So it can be done by using if keyword, if keyword. So if is a keyword, so we have a structure called if, else, if. So simply if structure is single selection, structure if else is a double selection structure if if we if is false do else uh, else function else structure if it is nested then it has to do if else if so we see example how to implement that thing so if don't have any semicolon if don't have any solo if so how to write a if selection uh, what is the syntax for if if we have to use a logical expression. If logical expression is true, then this statement will be executed. 
if the see here if this is the syntax for if else structure if if this logical is true print this statement else print this statement okay see here nowhere there is a semicolon so this is a structure of if else if and if else syntax of if else see this is a simple if else if a is greater than b so we assign c value to a else c value to b so this is a simple program of using a if language then we have if else statements if else if so means if this is true execute this thing else if execute check this expression if true then do this thing else do this statement means first if it is checking for if statement if it is true execute this program and come out if it is not true then again check for one more condition then print the statement print or do that execution if that is also false then execute this statement so this is the structure of if else if else statement okay example is this one say print the value so we have integer a and b value print a and b which is greater so we are giving we are taking input from the keyboard so we are doing percentile percentile so we are assigning the value to a and b from the user and we are checking here it is a if statement we are this is a logical operator which is less than so if it's checking a is less than b then print a is less than b else check if a is equal to equal to b so this is the structure else we are checking another condition with this condition is false then again we are if this condition is false then we are checking if else condition so if we are checking this thing if this is true execute this thing if it is false then go for else condition that will this code will be executed okay so this is the structure of if and we have multiple selections multiple selection of actions we want to do then we use switch keyword so switch keyword is another selection structure where it is going to give the actions in terms of a integer values like so the integer expression so you have to you going to check the condition and you have to give that expression whether it is one or two or three so depend upon this condition this is case 1 case 2 case 3 if case expression is 1 if expression is 1 then this action will be come uh, this this thing will be executed and after that it will come out of a loop otherwise it will go for the second value uh, if if you are going 2 then this case will be constructed is checked and this action will be taken and this will be come out okay so this is the syntax for switch switch check the expression flow back it case check the um, you are saying we here no semicolons here please understand there is no semicolon we are using colons only and we are checking if this is true do this action if this, this is true do this action so these are we have a default condition if none of them is true then you have to give default action which will make this thing terminate if you don't use default action if none of the condition is satisfying this will hang your system this system this this loop will be continuously running till the so we are so we have to definitely give default condition otherwise it will be continuously running so this is a syntax for switch case okay then we have repetitive structures so repetitive structures we already know what are repetitive structures if you want to perform a task or a, or a thing multiple time like counting from 0 to 100 or uh, so all these thing will be checked by those things okay by using these structures so these we have we have number of repetitive structures we have for loop we have while a do while loop so see what exactly the syntax of for for loop and while loop are there so see uh, what exactly the difference between for loop while loop and what is the difference between do while loop so we are going for for loop and while loop we are going to check the condition first 
then the execution of the code will take place. If it is true, then the execution of code will take place. So if it is not true, the execution of code will not take place. But do while, what exactly it will do? It will first do the code once and then it will check for condition to repeat it, to repeat again, okay? So that is the difference between do while loop. So do while is a bottom test loop and for and while loop are top test loop, okay? So this is the example of a while loop. So while we are checking the logical operation, if it is true, this will be executed. The statement will be executed. Otherwise, it is very much, this, this thing is very much similar to this thing. You can write like this also, okay? So this is the syntax of a while loop, okay? So the, till this expression gets false, you can execute this statement. That is the meaning of a while loop, okay? Till this statement is true, that, that statement will continuously run. When it is false, it will come out of that loop, okay? So this is the, so we have while, right? It is only checking one expression. What, we have a very beautiful structure given by C programmer, a C developer is for loop. In a single expression, in a single uh, text, we can do multiple things in that one. That is for loop syntax. So for loop, what it is saying, we are giving expression one, expression two, expression three. So what is expression one? Expression one is nothing but initialization condition. We are giving initialization condition for that. We are setting the initial condition. Expression two is checking the logic. Like while in while we are checking the logic. Similarly, this expression is nothing but logic, whether to repeat the thing or not. Okay, once the statement is completed, what next you want to do with that expression, whether you want to increment it or whether you want to decrement it, what exactly you want to do with that expression, it is expression three. Okay, remember for for loop, all three, all threes are, if you say semicolon, semicolon, it will, it will work like that. For for loop, if you use semicolon, all the, no expression is given, even then it will work. So that is called infinite loop. So because we are not giving any initialization condition, we are not checking any condition here, and we are not saying any increment or decrement. So it will keep on running this statement if you don't give any expression in this one. So this syntax will work perfectly fine if you don't give anything in this one. If you, if you miss semicolons, the, the, there will be a syntax error for that, okay? It is very important. So this is the example of for loop. So what exactly we are saying? We are assigning, we are declaring a data type of integer with K and L, okay? We are checking, so for loop, we are checking the expression one. This is expression one. So what we are checking, we are checking whether if, we are initialization. This is the initialization expression one is initialization. So K value is initialized to one and N value is initialized to 12. Okay, so this is expression one. What is expression two? Expression two is condition, right? We are checking the condition. So till when this condition, this loop has to work, we are checking, we are defining that value, that condition here. So till when, when it has to be done, till K value is, is when k value is less than nine. And n value is greater than six. Till then, so if both, because we are using and operator here, and logical operator, if this is true, this is true, then only this code will run. Otherwise, the code will not, it will come out of loop. It will come out of loop. And after this, code is executed, we are incrementing the value of the K and we are decrementing the value of N. So till these two conditions are satisfied, this printing of K and printing of N will take place. Till when it will take? Till K value is eight and N value is, N value is five. 
So, so it is very much similar to. So we can write like this also. So see here we are not. So initialization is taken. So this so this thing these two both are can be can be written upwards. Like we have done every previously, that k we are initializing one and is equal to and is initializing twelve. At that time, this is this we can leave empty, like this, and we can increment this value in print of statement itself. We can increment after this statement is printed, then this value will be incremented. So that is how the for loop is used. Okay. So tell me the what is the value of this thing? See for loop, you see here, for loop here semicolon is there. So we have no statements. So the output, so there will be no loop running here. So it it will not go into this loop because we are terminating the for loop. In the for loop, in the previous example, you see the for loop there is no semicolon. Semicolon is done only the statement level itself. When we are saying when when putting semicolon here, we are saying we are giving no. Action to be taken care at that time, which is very much here. So that is what you have to observe in this example. So what will be the output of i? I value will be zero only. The output of i value will be because we are checking for. So it will be continuously checking the value. So we are putting semicolon. That's why it is still repeating five times, and because it is not entering into this loop. After this loop is completed, the value of i is five. That will be printed because we are putting printing the value of i here. So that is the value of i. Okay. Now what? Now we have don't have semicolon. So every time it will initializing with zero. So it is checking with i is less than five, which is zero is less than five. So it will print zero one zero ones. Then it will increment to one. Till it is four, then it will be printing the value of i, which is post increment. So value of i will be printed here. So it will print one, two, three, four, i here. Okay. So this is the for loop here. So uh, we have to discuss about pointers. Pointers are nothing but it is a. So uh, when a variable is declared, so It is so pointers are nothing but a variable. Let the address of the variable pointers are nothing but variable which is defining the address of a variable. Okay, pointers are nothing but which are holding the address of a variable. Okay, like we have variable name and value is there. Okay, so you know what is the pointers and everything. so these are the pointers so pointer is so this is the variable name i which have value 22 and which is having a address of 1000 so pointer will be assigning a value to so i so it is assigning so where so pointer is a variable which is giving the address of the variable i okay so this is the declaration so we are going to so this is star ptr to the some variable is nothing but the content of the location of this pointer so that is what so ptr is a variable which is holding the address of this variable so when you p when you percentile star p star p means which will be giving the content of the that is nothing but Twenty-two. So that will be stored here. So this is initialization of a pointer. Okay. Okay. 
so these are so I will, I will stop with this thing this example so we are giving four integers value four variables we say x y and if a, a variable with point with a name star ptr1 star ptr2 so star ptr1 uh, the pointer 1 will be holding the address of variable x and pointer 2 will be holding the address of 1 so means pointer 2 is is there is assigned with address of x which is very much similar to this one when we say star ptr2 it will definitely going to pin 22 because it is holding the star value the address location with this value okay when we say star ptr1 it is also going to print the value of 22 only because it is a hole in the, the variable x value okay so I, I end the session today okay hello starbucks Atiani, you know? Katyani Guru? Anyone from the black box? Give me a second, friends. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, I'm leaving. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Andy.